Shatima. Eh, morning, eh? Oh, okay. Alpha Omega in your Baba. Alpha Omega, you are worthy of our praise. Alpha Omega in your Baba. Alpha Omega, you are worthy of our praise. Clap your hands. God, your mommy, like that. Oh, me, no, oh, me. Oh, no, we can't. Oh, you can't be a fool. Can't go to Korega. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Oh, no, 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 The name of the Lord with me. Hey, go, go, go. Help me, Jesus, go. 
Hallelujah. Yes. Let us be seated. Just as you are seated right there. Say, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. You have uh, stopped the, the wicked work, uh, workers of their evil work in my life. You have disarmed their evil power against my life. I am your child and you have released me from every bondage. I have witnessed your miracle in my life. Lord, I thank you. Let's say the same thing. Lord, let's turn it to prayer. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you the glory. God, the Holy Spirit, you are the mighty King. Resurrection and life, we thank you, Lord. You have delivered us from the lions. We give you the glory. Amen. I greet us. Well done with the revival. As you are going back and forth, the Lord will not depart from you. That which your heart desires, the Lord will do it for you. Any power that wants to hinder you from receiving your blessing, the Lord will, will deal with them. Everyone that harbor evil spirit around you, that says they will not desist from their evil work, the Lord will stop them by force. Anyone spiritually hindering your life, that does not allow you to grab hold of your blessings. They will have no peace in their lives. You will testify and give God the glory. You are going to praise the name of the Lord Jesus. We have been deliberating on how we can praise the Lord. In other words, how our situation and circumstances will turn out to the glory of the Lord. It will happen when you look for that situation, but it has disappeared from your life. Then you will, you will turn to press, praising the name of the Lord. There was once a woman in the church. Every day the woman will come out and give testimony and praise the name of the Lord. And the pastor was uh, fed up with her always give, having a reason to give testimony. The pastor said, well, it's enough. And this woman had a bloated uh, neck. She had something right there in her neck that is like a tumor. And she said, praise the Lord for me. The Lord has removed the tumor in, in my neck. Some people will praise the Lord and others will just uh, look on. By the tenth year exactly. As that woman was praising the Lord. God looked upon her with mercy and the night of that that day then some spiritual surgeons appeared to this woman and they removed that tumor in, on her neck by the time she woke up in the morning that tumor that lump had disappeared the woman please let's take care of that baby quickly maybe outside uh, the woman got up early in the morning and she began to praise the Lord fervently she was asking God have you really done this miracle for me that day the whole church was packed they were supposed to get out of the service at 7 a.m. 12 p.m. people were still there because of this miracle. Because this woman was just blessing the name of the Lord. You see, that situation you are experiencing is not your own. 
God is ready to remove that situation from your life. And once God performs that miracle, you will laugh and smile for joy. I want you to be praising God in the meantime. Don't frown while you are praising the name of the Lord. Praise God wholeheartedly. God is a God of praise that inhabits the praise of his people. He cannot praise himself. We who he had created in his own image, we are the one to praise him. When you praise God, he will do more for you. Don't hide the goodness of God to you. Whatever he has done for you, make sure you acknowledge it publicly. You come out and praise him. Any power that will say you will not praise God again, the Lord will deny them. We are going to rebuke every form of storm in our lives today. Every storm that is waging, uh, raging against us and our children. Every storm that is raging and waging against our family. God does rebuke storms for his people. Storms of sorrow. We are seated and our faces uh, uh, look differently, but we have different issues bugging us inside of our hearts. And each of us has something in your heart that you want the Lord to rebuke and remove from your life. And the Lord will do exactly that for you. Because that situation doesn't belong to hide in your life. The topic is the rebuke of the storm over the sea. Let's look at Matthew chapter 8. Verse 23 to 37. To 27. Matthew 8. Matthew chapter, Hallelujah. Behold, a great storm arose. A great wind storm arose. Where was Jesus? And where is Jesus? Are you ready to summon and call on Jesus in your yes, own soul? So I want to tell you, Jesus has not gone on any errands. But yet you are being battled and embattled by this storm on your, in your life. There are some people that they are hardly eating and feeding themselves. Some are in their matrimonial, uh, matrimonial home, but it's as if they are alone. Some people have been in their uh, uh, husband's home for a long time without any time. And that storm will be driving them from one place to the Do you think a person that is embattled can rest? One that the powers of the world is embattling, can they have rest in their lives? Some of them, the storm will, will lead them to, to the uh, harbourless. Those that call themselves the children of God, but they are food. 
All those fake prophets. Some will be driven by their challenges. Some will go to, to idol houses. They will go to fake prophets. It's because the storm in their lives is But it is Jesus you need to call on to, to so that your life will give glory to the Lord. There are some that the enemy is just kicking like ball. Some the powers of darkness will be draining their finance. There was once a young lady. She was very good looking. And she loved the people of God. And she was studying. She was, she was pursuing her education and the mother was uh, averagely well to do. And then they brought her to, to me for prayer. I asked, what's the problem with this lady? She said, I just cannot, I, I, my brain cannot comprehend my studies. And I asked, so is that the reason why you are taking this lady all over? I'm aware I don't know you are you are being uh, challenged by lack of uh, ability to comprehend your I studies. I now ask her, what man of God slept with you? And she was just looking at me. I said, you need to confess. You need to open up right now. To the man of God that did this happened to be one of the radio that was when this man will preach, people will go there in, in, in droves. I said, I'm going to go and stand and await that man of God. That man disvaging this young lady. And I was just weeping for, for this lady. And the lady was just uh, pleading with me. I said, I myself, I want to go and see that man of God that did this thing to you. I said, my problem is not that he slept with you. But the problem he slept with you, he had removed the glory of your life by that. You went there for another issue. By the time you, you left, that man of God has caused more problem into her life. She had been going from one place to the other only because of problem with her studies. Some people, it's lack of job. It's joblessness that is their own storm. Here in America, you don't go to too many places to solve your problem, but when you go to Africa, you will see how people go from one place to the other because of their problems. Day, I went to my uh, little sister one day. She's I saw one lady there that her, her, her leg was um, decaying. Oh, okay. I saw her, her legs were full of dust, caked dust. And I said, where have you been going? How come you got all this dirt on you? She said, you see my, my feet all caked with dust is because of my problem. I've been going from one prophet's house to the other. She said she had gone to 30, that that one was the 31st person she will go to see to the people. I now said to her, I said, if you get to me, I'm not going to pray for you. I said, well, you have come to this prophet. I now ask my sister who was a prophet. I said, you want to add your own prayer to the 38 uh, prophets that have gone before you? I said to the woman in situation, I said, go to the mountain and pray to God by yourself. It's not her fault. It's, she's just been driven by the storm of life. My question is, what is the storm that is embattling your life? Who has uh, turned your life into a storm of life? I'm telling you, this God is ready to rebuke the storm in your life. And you are going to be delivered from that storm in your own life too. Who are these people that become the storm? It's not other than the, the wicked, the spiritually wicked people. Look at this story. Jesus was in the boat, but he was sleeping. He was sleeping. 
Siwo, afafa la di deni nu okun, ni nu okun. Tobe ti riru omi fi nbu oko, mole. Sugba onsun. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves but he was sleeping. If you don't cry out to Jesus he is sleeping until you cry out and lift up, lift up your voice to him. It's not that you just call his name gently. And even while you are praying you are even dozing off. If, when you get to prayer mountain you will see people that will take off their jacket and pray earnestly because that's the only one that can deliver you Jesus it doesn't matter how many places you go for solution there is no deliverer there except Jesus there was one uh, individual that uh, got into the government problem uh, in, in this America I bet 30, I bet 20, 20,000 dollars. I bet fa won baba la wa won la fa won ni shegun. Pe kan ma ba won kan ba ma ba sise lori awon eyan boya kan ma kan ma le gbin lori owo to n gba lowo won. He will he will give as much as 20,000 dollars to those uh, fetish doctors so that they will help him he will he can get out of the problem that he found himself in the US. Now the uh, the government have apprehended him in spite of all the thousands of dollars he has spent on fetish doctors. Those people he was uh, meddling with they would not want him to stop the, the the work he was doing they were just deceiving him taking his money. Because they were only after the money that they had. I told this woman that this, this dubious business you are doing, you need to stop it. I went to her house and I told her that she need to stop the 419, the, 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 the uh, dubious work she was doing. She gave me $800. The second day I told her to take her money back. The husband was pleading with me. I said, I'm not here to take uh, that kind of dirty money. If I don't have anything to eat and I'm just drinking water or so in my house, I prefer that to taking that kind of dirty money. I pray for you the storm that will be stronger than your life will, you will not experience it in Jesus name and the storm you are experiencing will come to you here anyone badly your life will stop the Lord will deal with and the disciples came to him and they awoke him who have you come to today I'm asking to whom have you come today? Who is going to rebuke this storm for you? They said, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose. And he rebuked the wind and the sea. And there was a great calm. I said the Lord will rebuke the storm for you. What you are not able to confront, the Lord will rebuke it for you. You will experience a great calm. And battle and badly you would cease from your life. Once it's time and I say you should clap your hands, do so. When I instruct you to pray, when it's time to pray, make sure you put your mouth the Lord that is strong and mighty will rebuke every storm in your life. And God will rebuke that storm for you. This is the one that will not uh, allow you to do so. Oh my daddy. That one will depart from your life. Oh my daddy. Any power that will obstruct you will depart from your life in Jesus' name. We're going to look at that same Matthew. Matthew 8. Matthew chapter 8. 28. Verse 28. Uh huh. I want to get any. Oh, my dear. What you know about your daddy? What are you going to Hallelujah. When you come to the other side of uh, to the country of the uh, Gagazins, 
there met him two demon possessed men coming out of the tomb exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way you know that these men these demoniacs were being tormented and oppressed by the demons in them this man was not able to fit among his comrades he could not fit among normal people the demons did not allow this man to reside among human beings it is the spirit inside of this man that drove him out of his house and they were residing inside of him my, my question is that what, what spirit is working against or harassing your prayer if you pray to God and you say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the name of Jesus every spirit of stagnation get out of my life get out of my life that spirit will just be watching and say what are you talking about the spirit will just be making fun of you and say you are not talking to me that, that spirit of stagnation will say I have not seen Jesus in your life I am not going to leave and that spirit is just you know, enlarging itself inside of your life one year, two years, three years and you keep saying this spirit leave me ok maybe you say Lord the spirit of lack of success. I say, get out of my life. That spirit will respond. Shut up your mouth. Because I cannot feel Jesus in your life. I will get out of your life when I witness Jesus in your life. If I don't see Jesus walking in your life, I'm not going to get out. And that spirit will be jubilating and excited inside of your life. That is why you need to call Jesus into your life. You have to depart from every ungodly lifestyle. You will live the life that is upright. Well, well, God. Yes, sir, in a year, that, that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus will manifest in, in your life. Well, my son, you will be doing that which pleases God. I'm about what? He will be going in and out I'm with about you. He will be living with you. So when you call him now, oh, Lord, about Lord, immediately he will drive out that spirit oh, from your life. Oh, my you don't have the power to drive that spirit from your life by yourself. In the scripture, there was one demon that spoke from a man. He said, I recognize Peter, I recognize Jesus, but who are you? because that man possessed did not see Jesus in the life of the one who cast him out the spirit in your life does not see Jesus in your life and you are not trying to cast it out he will just be taking you for a joke you are eating together you are drinking together you are sleeping together you are, you are waking up together and even in the church the spirit is still hanging around your life all because that spirit has not witnessed Jesus in your life no one is strong enough to cast that spirit out of your life let's read a little bit more before we go into prayers she will and suddenly they cried out saying what have we to do with you Jesus you son of God those demons who are speaking through this man they said Jesus what are you coming to do here my question is do, do the battles you are facing do they recognize Jesus when they see Jesus does your problem recognize Jesus when he's you have been fasting but what has happened all along the issue is you have to call Jesus in your life when Jesus sees that evil spirit in your life the spirit will depart from your life into my heart into my heart and into my heart Lord Jesus Come today and remain there Come into my heart Lord Jesus it is not the minister of God conducting the revival it is Jesus 
Jesus that you need to call in the hospital. Once you open your mouth wide, oh my God, you call right here. that demon will depart from your life. That spirit is saying, Jesus, what do we have to do with you? You, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of David, you have come here to torment me, the demon says. Because that demon didn't want to live that man's life yet. The, the demon just remained there. Didn't want to leave. I said the battle and the problem that has remained and defiant in your life. That spirit must leave you. That battle must depart. He says, You are going to insist that you, my brother, you, my problem, you must depart from my life. Oh my, oh no. When you insist that oh my situation, God, will, God, you know, when you insist that situation must depart. Get to get to so by this time now the demons they already recognize that Jesus has come and their time was up. their time to get out of this man's life was up so now the demons now say well let's cut a bargain if you have to drive me out why don't we just go into the swine they wanted to get into the swine what bear we pay uh huh uh -huh. Now a good way off from there was a herd of many swine feeding. That situation that you have been laboring over but has refused. Oh my God, I declare that situation will depart from your life today. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. You're getting away. What should be in way? I don't want to put in here. Yeah, do ya? Yes. So the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine, and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Uh huh. I can wait here, dear. I want it to swa I want let them know what's it ta. Aha. 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 Sorry, Oguto in your yoke for go for long, but why I declare that the battle you are experiencing will glorify God. When that battle is dissolved, oh, God will be glorified. Oh, you will no more witness that. Oh, my God, it's going to depart your life. That, that uh, battle that you are experiencing, once God defeats that battle, he will cause you to be revived. People will ask you, who, who helped you? And when you now tell them that it was in such and such church, they will follow you to the church. Lanam. In Lanam. That is the way it will be. Let's rise to our feet. Now we are ready to pray. You will say, my Jesus.